So this is the uh, sample preparation fume hood. This is where we prepare all the samples. So we add the, the powders or the solids onto the sample holders. These are the tools that you'll need. Spatula, scissors, tweezers, screwdriver, and then the carbon tape. For the powder samples, we use these uh, glass cover slips. And for films, we can use these copper tabs. It's important to adhere to the contents of your risk assessment. So if your risk assessment requires you to wear safety goggles, make sure you wear safety goggles. Um, but you should always wear gloves because the sample holders are sensitive to, to, to human contact. Depending on the type of sample that we have, there are different holders available. So I'll just go through those one by one. This is the plain dual height sample holder. It has a nice flat surface. And with this, we can stick a variety of different samples. So if we have a powder sample, we can stick these to glass cover slips and put the glass cover slips on the surface. If we have solids or films, we can either tape these or use carbon tabs to hold them in place. The next sample holder is the stub end entry sample holder. This is very similar to the plain dual height sample holder. We've got a nice flat surface here, but we've also got this notch on the end here. And with that, we can add stubs to this. So if we're doing an air sensitive transfer, which requires the sample to be on a stub, it's very helpful. Or if a sample comes already on a stub, uh, we can just put it onto the end there. So this is the heat and cool sample holder. So it's a little bit different to the others. It's got an isolated square stage. And that stage there, we can either heat up to about 800 degrees or cool down to minus 150 degrees. Of course, the temperature that we heat or cool to, we have to make sure that the sample is stable under those conditions. This is another sample that we can use for cooling. So this is to cool samples that have already been pre-cooled on the stub, whether we're transferring them from the surface science station into the main chamber. So with this, we can add a stub that's already at minus 150 degrees, and it keeps cool due to the conductive nature of the bar here. So this is just um, a variation on the uh, stub and entry sample bar. And this one here is the azimuthal sample holder. So it's different to the others. It's got this rotating stage here. So that's good for doing depth profiles. So we can put the sample on the middle, and then when we do the depth profile, we make a crater. Um, if we didn't rotate this, the crater could be a bit lopsided, but with rotating it, this ensures that the crater is completely symmetrical, which could improve the uh, data quality that we get. So now I'm going to prepare a variety of different samples on the plain dual height sample holder. So we've got two powder samples, uh, we've got a metal film, and we've also got a coin, just to show you the variety of different samples that can be analysed. So firstly, we need to just clean the sample uh, holder. It's just good practice to get into. The person before you should have cleaned it, but just, just to make sure. So when you clean or hold this uh, sample bar, it's very important not to touch the two metal contacts on the end. Uh, that's because these are what we, the instrument uses to detect what type of sample holder it is. So it might cause a few problems later. For the powder samples, we need to get a glass cover slip and we mount them onto these. So I'm just going to go to the uh, pre-prepared glass cover slips here. So this is what the uh, glass cover slip looks like. I'm going to put this down and uh, using some carbon tape, I'm just going to cut a very small amount off and this is what we adhere the sample to. So we only need a small square less than a centimetre. So I'm then going to take this and stick it to the uh, glass cover slip. Very carefully, we're going to peel back the tape. Let's use the tweezers. So this is the first sample that I have. It's this pet powder. It's a gray powder here. And I'm just gonna knock off some of the powder because we don't really need it too much. So you can see this is the amount of powder that we need. Typically, it's just the end of a micro spatula. I'm then going to put this onto the, the tape, give it a little tap. Press it down very gently just to smear it across the surface. So XPS is a very surface sensitive technique, so we don't need too much powder, just enough that we can actually see, see on there. We don't want any loose powder in the instrument, so we just have to tap it off. So we'll now prepare the second sample. So we need to clean the spatula first just to remove any contaminants. And the same as before, very gently we'll peel back the tape. This is more than enough uh, powder. So very small amount. Smear it across. And we're just going to label these just so we remember which one's which. So this is number one, 
and this is number two. Um, so we can now stick this to the sample holder. So we can just use a standard double-sided tape for this. I'm just gonna place this on the holder and then stick the samples on the tape like so. I'm gonna use the, the black carbon tape for this. We're just putting enough uh, tape down just to cover the whole of the the bottom of the coin. That's just to help with any charging issues that we might have. So there we go. That's that should be fine. Peel back this. And it's important to make sure that none of the sample overlaps with the the side of the bar. So here, this uh, coin is flush against the edge of the bar, which is good. We're going to uh, prepare a thin film. So this is a piece of gold foil. So for this, because gold is conductive, I, I'm going to just use the copper tabs to attach this to the bar. So the copper tabs can be found just here next to the sample bar. So we just have to screw the plate on and use the uh, bar to hold the sample down. Depending on how large the sample is, you might need to use two copper tabs. Now we've put the four samples onto the sample holder. We've got the two powder samples, we've got the coin, and we've got a, a metal film here. Even though we have tapped the powders, it's just important not to move the bar around too much, just in case there's any potential contamination that might occur. And that's it. So we've now prepared some samples onto a sample holder. So now it's the time to put them into the instrument and start the analysis.